Hello, I'm Harry Packwood with Ido CDL Training, and today we're going to cover a pre-trip vehicle inspection for a commercial vehicle. We're going to start at the front of the vehicle. We're going to look for leaks on the ground, and we're going to look for the truck leaning to one side or the other, which would indicate a low tire or a possible suspension issue. We're also going to check our lenses to make sure they're clear, clear of debris and they're in proper condition, and that our license plate's securely attached and we have registration. Next, we're going to check the frame of the vehicle. We want to look for illegal welds, cracks, or excessive holds in the frame. From there, we're going to go to the exhaust. We want to make sure it's securely mounted, there's no leaks in it, which would be indicated by black soot marks. Next, we want to check the driveline of the vehicle. We want to make sure it's secure, the U-joints are in good condition, and if there was a carrier bearing, we'd make sure it's, a, it's securely attached. Next, we're going to inspect the passenger side of the engine compartment. First, we want to start with the alternator. We want to make sure that it's securely fastened and that the wires coming into the alternator are securely fastened and there's no corrosion. We also want to check the belt to make sure there's no more than half inch to three quarter inch deflection and that the belt is not weather checking. Next, we're going to want to check the water pump. It's, on this engine, it's directly below the alternator. It's a belt driven water pump and we want to make sure that it's securely fastened and there are no leaks. Next we're going to check the driver's side of the engine compartment. First we're going to start with the radiator to make sure it's secure and there's no leaks. We also want to check the shroud around the fan to make sure it's secure and in place. We we'll also want to check all of our fan blades to make sure that they're all present and secure. We we'll also want to check all of our hoses to make sure that they're secure and there's no leaks. We we'll also want to check our coolant level to make sure that it's in proper operating level and that the lid's on tight and there's no leaks coming out the bottom. We'll check our power steering fluid to make sure that it's at appropriate level. On this model, you would check right here through the window. Make sure that the cap's on tight and there's no leaks coming out the bottom. Next, we're going to check the engine oil. We want to make sure it's between add and full on the dipstick. Next, we're going to check the air compressor on the engine. This is a gear-driven air compressor. We're going to check all the lines going in and out from the air compressor to make sure there's no leaks. Next, we want to move to the steering components. We're going to make sure there's not excessive play. Our U-joints are in good condition. The steering box is securely mounted. There's no leaks coming out of the steering box or the power steering flu fluid reservoir. From there, we're going to follow down to the pitman arm. At the pitman arm, we're going to make sure that all the bolts are secure any, any cotter pins are secure in the castle nuts and that this drag arm is in proper condition. Next, we're going to cover the suspension. First, we'll check the suspension hangers where the springs are mounted to the truck. Make sure that all the bolts are in place and tight and everything's secure. Next, we'll check the leaf springs to make sure they're not scissoring and there's no cracks in the leaf springs and they're all present and they're securely mounted. Then we'll go to the U-bolts to make sure that they're securely mounted and there's no cracks or broken bolts. Next, we'll go to the shock absorber to make sure that it's securely mounted and there's no leaks. Next, we're going to check the brake system. We're going to start with the air brake lines. We're going to make sure that they're not weather checked, there's no cracks, and there's no leaks. And they're securely mounted to the air can and at the frame side. We're going to check the air can to make sure it's secure and there's no leaks. From there, we're going to go to the slack adjuster and the push rod. We want to make sure that all the pins are present and securely fastened. This is a single stage air can. What we're going to do is you're going to pull on the set slack adjuster and make sure there's no more than an inch of play. From there, we're going to go to the inside of the drum. We're going to make sure there's no cracks in the drum, no welds, and make sure we have adequate brake pad. We're going to check the tire. We're going to start on the inside and then we'll check the outside for abrasions, bulges, and cuts. Then we're going to go to the top of the tire to check for 430 seconds of tread depth to make sure that the tread has an even wear pattern and that there's no chunks out of the tread and no cuts in the tire and no nails or anything like that. Then we're going to come down to the rim. We're going to check for a bent flange. We'll move down to the rim itself where we want to make sure there's no cracks or welds on the rim. Then we'll come down to the lug nuts. We want to make sure they're all present, they're secure, and that there's no cracks or rust streaks coming off the lug nuts, which would indicate a loose lug nut. Then we want to go down to our hub 
to make sure that it's full of oil and there's no leaks and it's secure. Then we're going to want to check the valve stem cap to make sure it's on securely and that we have enough air pressure in the tire. Next, we're going to check our mirrors to make sure they're securely mounted. We're going to make sure the door opens and shuts, the hinges are in good condition, and the seal inside the door is in good condition, and that the door shuts and latches properly. From there, we're going to make sure that our steps are securely mounted. We're going to make sure our fuel tank is securely mounted and the straps are in place. There's no leaks out the cap and no leaks on the bottom of the ground from the tank. Next, we're going to check our airlines and electrical cord on the truck side. We want to make sure that they're securely attached. There's no leaks. Our electrical is securely attached. There's no cuts in the lines. There's no leaks in the airlines all the way to the trailer side. And that our electrical cord is attached and our glad hands are, are securely fastened and there's no leaks and our glad hand seals are in good working condition. We also want to make sure the front of the bulkhead has no holes in it or any damage and that the lights or any reflectors are present and working properly. Next we're going to inspect the fifth wheel of the truck. First we'll start with the apron to make sure it's secure, there's no cracks, no welds that are broken on the apron. Then we'll go to the fifth wheel and the apron, make sure there's no gap in between the fifth wheel and apron and that the fifth wheel is properly lubed. Then we'll go down to the platform bolt to make sure that the nut is securely fastened and the bolts in place. Then we'll go to the release arm to make sure that the release arm is in the latched position. From there we'll go down to the mounting bolts to make sure they're all present and properly secured and there's no broken welds. If this was a sliding fifth wheel we would make sure it's locked in place, but it is not. From there we're going to go to the back side and we're going to look up in there and inspect the, the kingpin to make sure it's in good condition and it's not bent or broken. And we want to make sure the locking jaws are also in good condition and they're not broken and they're properly latched around the kingpin. Next we're going to inspect the drive axle of the truck. We're going to start with the brake system. We're going to inspect these brakes the same as the front as far as the air can, the brake lines, the brake drums, and the brake shoes the same as the front. This is a dual stage air system. With the brakes applied, the push rod and slack adjuster should be at a 90 degree angle. We're then going to chalk the wheels and with the brakes released, we should have no more than an inch of play on the slack adjuster. From there we're going to our suspension. This suspension will check the same as the front, except for there's no shock. We'll check the leaf springs, the spring hangers, and the U-bolts the same. From there we're going to our wheels. We're going to check the condition of the wheels the rim, the lug nuts, and the hub the same as the front. The difference is going to be we have a set of duals here. We're going to look in between our duals to make sure there's no debris, no spacers, and that the tires aren't touching at the bottom which would indicate a low tire. We're going to check the tread depth which is different than the front. We only need two thirty seconds of tread on the rear. Next we're going to inspect the trailer. We're going to start with the side of the trailer, the condition, our lights at the top and any reflectors and make sure that we have 50% DOT tape down the side. If we had a side door or this was a flatbed, we'd make sure the door is secured or our load was secured. From there we're going to move down to the landing gear. We want to make sure it's fully retracted, the handle's in the stowed position, the condition of the landing gear is in good condition and it's functional. From there we're going to come down the side. Next we're going to check the trailer axle. We're going to check this axle the same as the drive axle. As far as the wheels, the rims, the brakes, and most of the suspension, except for this suspension has a torque arm. We want to make sure that the bushings are in good working condition, the bolts are secured, and there's no broken welds. We also want to check the trailer frame to make sure there's no broken welds, there's no bends, and then make sure there's any bolts are in position. Next we're going to check our mud flaps to make sure that they cover both wheels and no more than 10 inches off the ground and it's securely fastened to the truck. Then we want to make sure that the door is securely fastened and latched. We also should have 100% DOT tape on the back and make sure all of our light covers and lenses are in good working condition and clear of free debris. Next we're going to check the vehicle lights on the front of the vehicle. We'll start with headlights. We'll check our low beam, then our high beam. Then we'll check our park lights, 
Then we'll check our turn signals. Left, right, and our four-way hazards. From there we'll check our cab lights on top of the truck. Next we'll check the trailer lights on the rear of the truck. First we'll check our parking lights. Then we'll check our signals. Left turn, right turn, and four-way hazards. Then we'll check our brake light. And then we'll check our clearance lights on top of the trailer. Next we're going to do the in-cab vehicle inspection. We're going to start with our seat belt. We want to make sure that it fits snugly around you, it latches securely, there's no cuts or abrasions and frays in the seat belt. From there we're going to go to our mirrors to make sure that they're clean and adjusted properly and secure to our windshield to make sure there's no cracks in the windshield and no obstructions. And we also want to check our side windows to make sure that they're clean and they've sealed properly and there's no stickers or anything like that on there. And we'll go all the way across and check the passenger side the same. From there we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a safe start. We're going to make sure the vehicle's in neutral. I'm going to push the clutch in. I'm going to turn the key to the on position. When I do this, the ABS light should come on and turn off to show that it's working properly. Once the truck's ready, I'll go ahead and start it. Within a few seconds of starting the vehicle, I'm going to let the clutch out slowly, it's in neutral. I want to check my oil pressure to make sure that it comes up to proper pressure. I'm going to check my water temperature. I'm going to check my voltmeter. And I'm going to check my air gauges that they're working properly. From there, I'm going to check my defroster to make sure my heater works. From there, I'm going to make sure that my horn works and my air horn, which this truck is right here. From there, I'm going to inspect my fire extinguisher, my triangles, and my spare fuses are in the dash. I'm going to make sure that the fire extinguisher is in the green. I'm also going to make sure to check my left turn signal is working on the dash, my right turn signal, my hazard lights, and the high beam indicator. We're also going to check our windshield wipers. We want to make sure that they work properly and, they sp and the fluid sprays. Next we're going to do the brake test. We're going to start with the tug test. I'm going to make sure the vehicle's in neutral, push the clutch in. I'm going to release the truck brake, put it in low gear. I'm going to pull against the trailer brake to make sure the brakes are working properly, which they are. I'm going to put it in neutral, set the truck brake, release the trailer brake, put it back in low gear, make sure that the truck brakes hold, which it does. Back in neutral, I'm going to set both brakes. Now we're going to do the service brake test. I'll make sure I'm in neutral, push in the clutch, Release both brakes, put it in low gear, hands off the steering wheel. I'm going to pull forward at a slow rate of speed, and then I'm going to slowly stop the vehicle and make sure that it doesn't pull to one side or the other, which would indicate a brake problem. Next, we're going to do the air brake test. I'm going to push the clutch in, I'm going to put it in low gear, I'm going to shut the truck off. Then I'm going to turn the key to the on position. I'm going to let my foot off the clutch. I'm going to release my brakes. I have enough air. I'm going to make sure that I have over 100 PSI of air in both my gauges. Now we're going to do the leak down test that I'm in the proper position. I'm going to hold the brake firmly with my right foot. I'm going to make sure that I don't lose more than 4 PSI in 60 seconds and I'll time that with a watch. It'll be three PSI for a single vehicle. All right, that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply steady pressure on and off, stabbing the brake until my air gauge gets down to plus or minus 60 pounds of pressure, which my alarm and indicator should go off at that point.
which it does. The alarm and light have indicated that there's low air pressure. From here, I'm gonna keep fanning the brakes until between 20 and 45 PSI, which my TPV valve should pop out. Which it did at the appropriate thing. This ends my air brake test and my pre-trip vehicle inspection.